Hi, my name is Bill Crawford, and I got started in woodworking as a result of buying a, fix a fixer up house. In 1975, my wife and I moved to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and bought a 3,000 square foot uh, property in the historical, uh, historical district. After several years of uh, working at it, uh, where I learned to do plaster, plumbing, work on post and knob wiring, we got the house to the position where we would be serious about furniture. And uh, we could not afford at all the types of furniture we aspired to. And uh, in Pennsylvania, we called that having champagne tastes and a beer pocketbook. So I tried my hand at uh, making some things. Uh, at the time, for the renovation, I had built a work table. I had a radial arm saw and various uh, hand tools. Uh, various hand tools that I'd use to make wainscoting and trim and things like that. So I got started with this little book that I picked up. Uh, this book has got some Danish modern furniture in it, made popular very soon after World War II. And uh, from that I made several pieces, shelving, tables, and uh, interestingly enough the chairs I made from this book in 1984 won first prize plus best in show at last year's Florida State Fair. It's been a journey. It's been a journey of over 40 years. And the big turning point for me in woodworking was when I read Fine Woodworking Magazine and found in that Thomas Moser's book about Windsor chair making. And since then, uh, not only have I made a lot of projects from the book, I've been influenced by his view of I, I, quality and faithfulness to design. These uh, chairs he makes are guaranteed for life and I like the fact that I'm guaranteeing stuff that would go beyond me. So we moved uh, west of Allentown to a place called Loho Mukunji and uh, I had uh, a 1750 foot shop. So the full basement became my, uh, my boys club and I was the president. And uh, in that shop is where I upgraded my planer from a 13 inch tabletop to a 15 inch Delta X5. And I also uh, bought my bandsaw, which is an 18 inch jet, and uh, the sander I had, which is a jet 1632. Uh, later, I lived there nine years, and towards the end of the nine years, I knew I was going to be retiring. And so I took the opportunity to do things I would have hesitated to do because of the expense uh, after retirement. I did uh, those things while I was working. Um, in that shop, I built a number of projects. Uh, I uh, built uh, Thomas Moser's bar, uh, bar stools. I built nine of those. I built uh, a lingerie chest, and uh, I, I sometimes lose track of how many of the things that I've built because I don't particularly keep a calendar of those things, and I usually don't sign the work. Uh, the people uh, important to me in my life know who did what, and after that, the work stands on its own. The exception to that is this notebook I keep, and going back to my first Thomas Moser chairs. A couple weeks ago, this book actually got shoved back behind some other ones in there, and I thought I lost it. I wanted to sit down and have a good cry. <laughs> but I did find it, and I've moved some other books out of the way so it doesn't get lost again. So tell me about your current shop. I retired in uh, April of 2012, and I feel very lucky to, uh, to have this place. Uh, every morning I look out and see the, the intracoastal waters of Florida. This uh, shop space is approximately 1,100 feet, divided up into two rooms. Uh, the outer room, which was the garage, is, is my machine room with some storage. This room, which would be called uh, some kind of bonus room or something, is uh, basically my bench room. A lot of storage, but this is where I do my bench work. Uh, this is uh, a nice handy shop. It's a little crowded because I brought all my machinery with me uh, from, this, from my house in Pennsylvania where I had over 1,700 square feet. But I managed to put together a layout 
and uh, some some of the tools are not used continuously. For example, the drill press on wheels, there's a mortising machine. In the other room, there's a lathe and a sander that are not used all the time, so they don't have permanent duct work to them. And it's all, uh, it's manageable. It's manageable, but I, I'm always looking for a way to clear up. I've what, been what kind of projects do you like to build? I like more and more. What I like to build are things with curve, curvature, and contrasting woods. I'm spending less and less time on the XYZ grid than I've ever, ever before. Uh, some of the projects I've built here was a uh, Thomas Moser settee modeled after his continuous armchair. So do you design your own projects or do you use uh, published plans? A bit of both, a bit of both. One of the things I should tell you is that I don't build the same thing twice too often. Uh, most of my projects are one-offs uh, or I build things for the second time with a lot of gap and time in between. So there's a lot of time gap in there and so it feels new and you've got to basically start over with the techniques and uh, learning how to build it. One power tool that you could keep, which would it be? Well, it would be very impractical because I love that table saw in there. I bought that table saw over 30 years ago and I bought it used in Birdboro, Pennsylvania. If you asked me that question about my hand tools, I'd have a little uh, longer answer because a lot of these tools are legacy and I really love them. When Irma blew through here, uh, I took all of these hand tools here, here, over there, up to my dining room table to be sure that I could preserve them. Tell me how you use your hand tools in your project. If we incorporate measurement and finishing and intermediate steps, I'm going to go in that order. Um, my measurement system is, well, how shall I say it? Old. <laughs> I like the older style of uh, squares and so forth. And basically, I'm using a pencil. I don't use any CAD system at all. Uh, I'll use my planes uh, to clean up surfaces and to clean up edges. Uh, there's not, you, you cannot sand an edge or a face as well as you can plane it. If you want, want an edge to catch, light, to catch light, you plane it. And I do that a lot. I'll also plane small parts that I don't want to put through my machinery. I use my hand tools, for example, joinery. Um, you know, if, if it's a table with eight mortise and tendons, I prefer to do it by hand just to keep up the practice. I bought these chisels. If I'm doing something, uh, you know, eight mortise and tendon joints, I'd, I really prefer to do it by hand to keep up the skill. I've had these things a long time and I enjoy using them. This plane is a Stanley number no. four. My father-in-law gave me this plane. His father gave it to him in 1943. His father bought this plane during World War I when he was in a new house and needed to build screens. I received this and I really like it. So then I added a, you know, a Lee Valley, Lee Valley blade. This one, this is, this is a skew plane. And I use this a lot because it's, it's relatively insensitive to grain. I'm, I'm willing to bet you this one is older than I am. I'm just kind of willing to put money on that. Here's a number four from Veritas. And I may be struck by lightning, but I'm telling you, this is a better plane than that old Stanley. It's handier, it's got the right weight, it's got a little better width, and uh, it's just all in all uh, more fun to use. This is a 20 buck spoke shave that I bought at a, uh, in a variety store when I first started working with Thomas Moser Furniture. Uh, before I owned a lathe, this is what I used to make the spindles. Do you ever sell your work? No, I never sell work. My, my strong feeling is that if you sell something, you're not doing a favor. Uh, 
it, so it can it can interfere with relationships. What do you use to uh, continue to inspire you? Well, here in Florida, for the first time, I'm a, I'm a member of a group, uh, the St. Petersburg Woodcrafters Guild, and I draw a lot from that. Those conversations with uh, the people that are say, of similar minds to mine. Uh, previously. Uh, I spent a lot of years on my own. I mean, I've got a bookload, you know, James Krenov, Tay Freed, Bill Hilton, all, Thomas Moser, all kinds of books. And that's really how I learned things, along with Fine Woodworking Magazine. Uh, in addition to the Guild, uh, with the rise of YouTube, uh, that's a good source of information. I would tell them to do it, because there's no, there's nothing like the satisfaction I derive from sleeping in my own bed, eating at my own table, sitting in my own chairs, and doing that for my family. Uh, it is not inexpensive, so you gear yourself to the higher priced things that you might never buy. Uh, you never compete with Ikea. So I would just uh, point out that the work and the expense are justified by the satisfaction you want you'll receive. Learn patience. Um, there's a couple old hack phrases that are true. Uh, one of those is setting up shop. Uh, when, you, when you are fortunate enough to equip yourself with a shop, take your time, set it up with efficiency in mind, and uh, it will take time and cost money that you may not realize when you first get started. Second of all, I, I want to harp on the fact that build things you like and your family wants and build them based on higher level product, higher level furniture, not Ikea, not Crate and Barrel, things like Thomas Moser or other things that you can see online or read about in many of these books. Uh, no matter what you build, it's going to take you a long time longer than you think, especially if you're a, a weekender or weeknights plus weekender, which I used to be. And it's going to take you months to build projects. So make sure you build something that you'll keep a long time. Uh, and that doesn't matter to me whether you're building plywood shelves or you're building seating or something else. Make sure you, make sure you do something you like and that uh, you'll keep it for a long time.